It's grade 10 theory notes, module 1.7, extended hardware concepts. Input devices. The mouse, most common pointing device, has two buttons and a scroll wheel, generally. Gaming mice come in different shapes and even RGB colors. So yeah, some examples of different uh, gaming mice, uh, some RGB lights on display, a Wi-Fi mouse, sorry, a wireless mouse. Touchpad, so on laptops, push a touchpad. Pressure sensitive surface built into laptops. Some include buttons for clicking, a left and a right click, just like you'd have on a mouse. They work by following the movement of your finger on the surface, uh, used as an alternative to the mouse. Pointing stick, this is also found on laptops and it's a little button on the keyboard. Alternative to mouse used with laptops takes the form of a small button between keys. Not common anymore. Uh, it's a lot on business laptops. Pen input, pressure sensitive input device used with the digitizing tablet allows you to draw or write far more naturally uh, called a stylus. Uh, Apple's one is the Apple Pencil. Trackball, device with a large ball on it, and you move the pointer on the screen by rotating the ball with your finger, often used by people with disabilities. Touch screen, used on smartphones and tablets, allow the user to interact with the system using gestures, pinch, tap, swipe, Touchscreens are both input and output devices. Input because you can obviously use gestures. You can tap. Um, so it kind of works like a mouse and keyboard in that you're able to put input um, info into the device, but it's also a screen that you can see things. So it's an output device um, as well. Accelerometer. This senses movement. The accelerometer allows the device to change the orientation of the screen and act as a game controller. So you can move the phone while you are um, playing games and it will respond. Temperature sensor. Many devices have a temperature sensor to safeguard the electronics. If you leave your device in a hot place, the device can get too hot for the electronics to work. If the device has a temperature sensor, it can switch itself off until it cools down enough to be safe to use. Light sensor. The sensor allows the device to adjust to the brightness of the screen according to your surroundings. It can also be used to switch off a screen when you hold the phone to your ear so that you don't accidentally open apps or end the phone call. And um, often the light sensor will automatically adjust the light on the screen of the phone according to your surroundings. Electronic compass. The sensor works like a compass and shows you the direction in which the device is pointing. So, your fitness watches, um, they've got some of these um, sensors built in. Uh, your phone has a whole lot of different sensors. The camera, pedometer, how many steps are you doing? Light sensors, so turning the screen lights or dark. Thermometer, if you've left it out in the sun, it will turn it off due to heat. Fingerprint sensor, so you can uh, log on to the phone. Microphone, the oldest sensor. Make it possible for others to hear what you are saying. Gyroscope. You take a non-blurry if you like taking non-blurry photos you have the gyroscope to thank it corrects the camera shake accelerometer have you ever wondered how your phone knows which way you're holding it to display vertical versus horizontal magnetometer measures the strength of the magnetic field around the device to determine what direction it's moving proximity sensor keeps you from accidentally pressing buttons um, on your cheek during the call Types of gaming devices, so controlling a game with a keyboard or mouse is not intuitive or enjoyable for some. Um, a whole range of devices have been developed, including a joystick, a complete driving set, uh, steering wheels, controllers. Digital camera, cheap and easy to use, small, light, and doesn't require you to purchase film. Film is what was in the old type of cameras that were not digital cameras. Um, you'd have to put in film and you could take, say, 12 or 24 pictures. And um, digital camera allows you to view your photos immediately. The old school camera didn't allow you to do that. You'd have to develop the film first um, and then see which photos are good. You can extend the memory on the device by storing data on an SD card as well. 
easy to download photos onto a computer using Bluetooth, USB cable, or SD card. Flatbed and sheet bed fed scanners. Flatbed scanner, slightly larger than A4 in size. You can scan photos, magazines, and documents. A sheet fed scanner is portable. It's smaller than a flatbed scanner and can only scan one page at a time rather than a book. QR code readers. QR code is designed to allow you to quickly obtain and enter long text information like a web address, simply by using the camera on your mobile device. Scanning the QR code opens a web page with more information of the item scanned. Most modern cell phones have the QR code reader built straight into the camera app, but if your phone doesn't, you can just go to the app store and download a QR code scanner. Barcode readers, used in places such as shops and libraries, works by shining a laser onto a pattern of black lines and recognizes a numerical code that is associated with the item. It works with your point of sale systems. Biometric scanners, technology measures something biologically unique to you, such as fingerprints, pattern of the iris of your eye, built into laptops and smartphones. Um, they've either got a fingerprint reader or facial recognition. Biometric flash drives are also becoming more popular. Card input, used on bank cards and credit cards to store data. Modern bank cards now have a built-in chip rather than a magnetic strip to prevent the illegal duplication of such cards. Yeah, so RFID, radio frequency identification, uses small radio devices to store and transmit data. So you can have your pets uh, microchipped and if they get lost and someone takes them to like a vet, um, they can scan them and access that detail, that data that tells them uh, the address that the animals live at and contact details for the humans. Can control access to buildings. Um, it's built into bank cards, uh, really useful technology. Optical mark recognition, OMR, computerized test, can be scanned and marked using OMR technology. So um, when I studied at university, we had a lot of um, first year exams with just um, 100 multiple choice questions. Uh, very difficult. Um, every time you get something wrong, they're minus points, so negative marking. But you'd have a sheet like this, and each multiple choice answer you would circle with a pencil, a nice dot and it gets fed through this machine that can then recognize if it's correct or wrong and then give you a mark. Magnetic ink character recognition. Bank checks have account numbers printed on them using special magnetic ink. Magnetic ink character recognition is used to speed up the way in which these checks are processed. So the code is um, printed, the account number or the special um, account number for that check is printed I'm using the special magnetic ink and the little machine can read that on, on the check. This is being phased out as checks are not um, being used as much anymore in South Africa. Optical character recognition allows you to take a scanned document, which is saved as an image and convert it into an editable document. So if you scan a document, it'll be a, a file, an image file. You can't edit an image. Um, you can't edit the text in an image file. But if you use OCR software, it'll convert it back to its original form, and then you can actually delete or edit text in the document. Video and audio input. Why would you want to get video onto the computer? Well, you'd want to edit videos into movies or video clips, add video to presentation, carry on video communications, share with friends using services like YouTube. How can you get video onto your computer? Record directly from a webcam, transfer from a smart device, or camera by plugging the USB or Firewire cable into the computer. Remove the storage card from the camera and insert into your computer. What can sound be used for? Recording and mixing music, recording narration for presentations, inputting text, giving voice commands, uh, giving computer commands. To input live sound, you will need a microphone. Output devices. Audio output. What is sound used for? gives the user feedback when interacting with the computer. You know when you've made a mistake and you get that noise, uh, making it easier for disabled people to use a computer by reading interface items to them, make games more realistic, and turns a computer into an entertainment device. 
data projector connects to your computer and projects whatever is displayed on your monitor onto a screen or wall. Other devices, multifunction printers, we have looked at this earlier in the year, number of functions rolled into one device, printer, scanner, it offers fax to email, which is really scan to email, and photocopier. You uh, fax email or scan to email, you can scan a document and it can be sent in PDF form to your email address. Advantages, it saves space, it costs less than buying four different devices, and only needs a single USB connection port. Fax machine, these are kind of outdated devices, not really used anymore. A uh, standalone device that scans a document and transmits the image via telephone line to another fax machine, which prints it out. Fax to email allows you to send a fax to someone's email address. Storage device and media. CD, DVD, Blu-ray. CDs are used to distribute music. DVDs and Blu-ray are used to distribute TV series and movies. Storage capacity, so a CD can only store 700 megs. DVD can store 4.7 gigabytes. Blu-ray can store 50 gigabytes. These discs are referred to as optical discs and are read by optical readers. Optical reader or optical driver could be a DVD player or a Blu-ray player. Memory cards, digital cameras, smartphones, uh, Android smartphones, and tablets store their pictures or files, apps and videos on memory cards. A card reader is a device that connects to your computer and allows you to access the data in a memory card. So yeah, they've got a plugged in little adapter that you can insert your uh, SD card or um, micro SD card, and it can then read those files on your computer. Processing. Yeah, we've got a monitor. Yeah, we've got ROM chip, ROM chips. That's where our OS is stored. The instructions that tell your computer what to do when you boot it up. These yellow slots are your RAM slots where you can connect your RAM in and click them in. This white bit here is your power supply plug. So the power that's going to be going into your computer is going to be plugged and power, provide power onto the motherboard. We also have the CPU heatsink, and underneath that we've got our central processing unit. And this is the back, which are the different ports, so your USB, your um, audio um, headphone and microphone jacks, your Ethernet cable, your HDMI or your VGA ports. It's the motherboard. Large rectangular board. Sometimes they're green, sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're black, but mostly green. Large circuit board in the computer allows all other parts of the computer to connect to it allows all parts of the computer to communicate with each other. So it's used to help all these different things communicate with each other. The CPU, central processing unit, part of the computer that performs all the processing of data and carrying out of instructions. Plugs into a socket on the motherboard, found beneath the fan. Speed is measured in gigahertz. Speed indicates how many instructions the CPU can process in a second. Number of cores on your CPU can be dual core, quad core, or octa core, two, four, eight. Processing RAM, random access memory. RAM is where the CPU keeps its instructions while processing. It's volatile, so it loses its contents when the power goes out. Supplied in modules called DIMMs, dual inline memory module, which clip into the RAM slots on the motherboard. RAM is fast, electrical, not mechanical. The more RAM, the better the computer will perform. ROM, read-only memory, special chip on the motherboard, holds instructions needed to start the computer. It's non-volatile, keeping its contents when the power is switched off.